Hello and welcome to Auto EV. This is our third part in our series of the Beginner's Guide to Electric Cars. And in this one, we look at the full electric vehicle or BEV, Battery Electric Vehicle. Contrary to popular belief, electric cars aren't actually that new. In fact, the first cars were produced way back in the 1890s, and it was often the case that they outsold their petrol-powered equivalents. The downside, however, was the cost to produce them. With Henry Ford productionising the things like the Model T, it soon became very cost and inefficient to produce electric cars. Over the next 100 years or so, the electric car had many rebirths and stalls again. It wasn't really until the mid-1990s where California was literally suffocating under the pretense of petrol. It passed a mandate, the zero, of zero Emission Vehicle Mandate, that stated that by 1998, 2% of all cars sold in the state of California should be a zero emissions vehicle, rising to 10% in 2003. In 1997, Toyota launched the ever-popular Prius, but it was a hybrid, and it would take until 2008, a further 11 years later, and saw a tech startup called Tesla to show that a full electric vehicle was a viable alternative. It is exactly what it says it is. It has no form of internal combustion engine. It has a battery pack that stores the power that then feeds that power through to an electric motor, which is connected to the driven wheels through a single speed transmission. Yes, they do. Um, the size of the battery will theoretically dictate the range of the car. And as the full electric vehicle has no other form of propulsion, a much larger battery is required to move it along. So using the Ionics that we've been using in this series, the hybrid car has a 1.56 kilowatt hour battery, increasing in size to the 8.5 kilowatt hour battery of the plug-in hybrid. The full EV, however, has a 38 kilowatt hour high battery. This should give the car a theoretical range of around about 194 miles. So, the car relies solely on the battery to provide power for the car, and the bigger the battery size, then theoretically, the longer the range. Just keep in mind, however, batteries are affected by external factors, such as external temperature, and also running other ancillaries such as the air conditioning or heating will deplete the range as everything is powered from the single source. The car will also put a small amount of charge back into the battery when the driver uses the brakes through the brake regeneration that we've spoken about in the previous episodes. The car can only be charged to full by an external charger. Now most manufacturers either offer or recommend a type of wall mounted charging box that can be installed in your home. These will typically be lower powered than some public chargers and have a type 2 connector cable. To fully charge a car from flat will be dependent on the model and the battery size, although it can typically, typically take between 7 and 11 hours. Rapid chargers, or the CCS style, these charge at a high rate, sometimes up to 50 kilowatt hours and can take a car from flat to 80% in around 45 to 60 minutes. Manufacturers use the 80% marker as typically any battery will charge the last 20% at a much slower rate than the first 80. Yes, you probably will, because obviously, for a start, there's no mechanical noise from the car. There's no engine noise, there's no transmission noise. So your brain automatically attunes in to other noises, such as wind noise, road noise, and other noises from within the cabin itself. The other big difference is obviously the car doesn't come with a conventional manual or automatic gearbox. It's a single speed transmission which is operated from down here. The one big benefit of the electric car however, in terms of drivability, is the instantaneous availability of torque and power. Now if you've seen any of the Tesla traffic light -like Grand Prix that are very popular on YouTube where you see them slaying big supercars such as Ferraris and Lamborghinis, that will give you an idea of what I mean. Because there's no ramp up in revs, the power and torque is available from immediately pressing the throttle pedal. 
Well, there are two very divisive camps. Some people still see electric cars as being an inconvenience due to charging, as it takes much longer to fill a car up with electricity than it does with a conventional fossil fuel such as petrol or diesel. However, these days battery technology is moving on and we're now starting to see an awful lot of cars coming out with a range of between 250 and 300 miles. And it's at this stage where the electric car starts to make an awful lot of sense. Most people these days have a commute of around about 40 miles. Therefore, there should be no reason why an electric car can't be used in exactly the same way as a conventionally powered car. Let's be honest, most of us plug our mobile phones in overnight, so why not charge up your electric car overnight? Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the series, we will be back covering more subjects on electric vehicles. If you like what you see, please remember to like the videos and subscribe to make sure that you get a notification of when the next ones are uploaded. See you soon.